Hey everyone, what's up? It's me, Robert, and I'm doing a gaming video today. This video is going to be about my year in gaming in 2020. So, as most people had it the same way, the coronavirus kept you indoors a lot of the time. And, you know, I'm a gamer, I've always been into games, but this year I just, you know, I wasn't going out and doing anything, so a really good way to pass my time was play all the games I've been collecting, because I moved to Japan about eight years ago and we've been collecting lots of games and you know they're so readily available here that beating every game that you buy is like almost impossible I think for most people even nowadays um, but I wanted to go with, with uh, talk through some of the games that I played this year and uh, hopefully you guys can uh, give me some comments about what you think about these games and what games you played this year in 2020 so I'm um, going in no particular order. So I already talked about this one on my channel before. Final Fantasy VI for the Super Famicom. Um, I have this also on the Super Nintendo Mini. I played the English version and some of the Japanese version. Uh, but outstanding game. Uh, I would say replay, replay, replayability is very good with this game. A uh, a lot of characters to use, the magic system is really good, the music is great. I would say like uh, for 2D Final Fantasy games that I've played so far, I've played 1, 2, 3, and 6. I haven't played 4 or 5 yet. This is my favorite. You know, it's a very popular game. So that's it. I would definitely say try this game. I had a great time with it. Next. Chrono Trigger. So, I know everyone knows this game. Um, I had bought it a long time ago for the DS and never beat it. I got to the part where you fight Masa and Mune in the cave and I, I just wasn't good enough at RPGs at that time to beat that. And uh, I went back to it and, uh, you know, this game's really funny because it's kind of hard to grind. It's not like uh, in Final Fantasy moving from town to town where you're fighting. You only fight when you go into areas. So getting your experience points up is a little more difficult in this game. But I would say that the real standout thing for this game uh, was one, the soundtrack, hands down one of the best soundtracks ever. Sorry, better than Final Fantasy VI, I have to say that. Uh, also the fighting system, uh, it's active. I would definitely recommend use the active. You have active and weight. The active is so intense and you get so uh, invested in it. Uh, what's really different than say like a Final Fantasy game that's 100% turn based so yeah great game definitely want to replay it again uh, the soundtrack's incredible there's tons of really cool covers of people on the internet uh, on YouTube doing covers of this stuff and it's outstanding so definitely Chrono Trigger really enjoyed it you guys say Chrono or Chrono what do you say I don't know it's Chrono. Is it Chrono? I don't know. Okay, next game. Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Outstanding. What an incredible game. The music is amazing. The story. I think the thing that really puts this above a lot of other games is the, uh, the characters. Like, the story is really, really good. Um, I think Tech and Princess, their love interest thing going on is adorable it's great um, you know there's tons of really mo moving and uh, emotional things uh, Koopa and his uh, his dad and stuff like that like it's a really good game if you've never played this game I know it's really expensive now it's totally worth it and I've never done emulation before but you could probably get an emulator for it it's probably illegal I don't know I've never done it I still have the uh, USA GameCube version. I bought this when it came out. And uh, like a lot of other games, I got pretty far into it. And then, you know, I got something else and then never finished it. And I'll have to say, this is one of the most rewarding games that I've played uh, ever, easily. Same with Chrono Trigger, but these two, this is really difficult if you're gonna say which one is better. Uh, I really can't say. They're both fantastic. Next game I play, let's take a sharp left. Red Dead Redemption, the original. I don't have a PS4 or a PS5, I have a PS3. And I have one of the original ones that plays PS1, PS2, and PS3 games. So it's like really 
useful because it has HDMI out and I can play PS1 games. Um, and I really started to, you know, think about like why is Rockstar so popular and uh, Rockstar Games. Uh, and you know, the new one came out and people really liked that. I I'm not going to pay $400 to get a PS4 and then pay like $70 to get that game, it's like $500. And I'm, you know, I'm interested, but I'm not spending that kind of money on that. I can do way cooler stuff with like $500. So yeah, this was really great. Um, I didn't finish it. I got to Mexico. Like you get like, you're chasing this guy, Bill, and Bill runs away and you gotta, I think his name is Bill, but you know, you're chasing this guy and doing all these side quests and everything. It's cool. I got to a certain point where I felt like the shooting got so heavy with this game, like now you gotta get better at shooting things moving in the air, and, you know, using Deadeye and stuff like that. It's cool. That's not really why I play games. Like I really like games for strategy and stuff like that. So these kind of like action heavy games, it's, you know, it's cool. It's not the best, um, but you know, I had fun. The soundtrack was really good. Um, and the characters were pretty cool. You know, Seth is really weird, the grave robber guy. I didn't, uh, and the, the tonic salesman. They're weird characters. And I think that's interesting that Rockstar went that far to make standout characters in a game that's, you know, really action-based. So, Red Dead Redemption. I kind of want to finish it. It's really like a tiring game. Like, you have to be like focused and like ready to rock to play this. And I, I don't know if I'm that kind of person. I really don't. All right, so on the next game I played. This is the game I probably played the least out of the ones I'm showing today, but I did play it. Skyrim. <laughs> I've never played Skyrim before. I tried. I tried before. I actually bought the Switch version and I sold it because I just couldn't get into it. And, um, you know, but then I found this USA edition copy of uh, Skyrim for PS3. And uh, PS3 is region free. Did you know that? You can play a PS, a US PS3 game on a Japanese one, and it's fantastic. So, yeah, uh, it's cool. I mean, I, I think I missed the the doorway of when this was like really amazing. Like the first thing when I saw this game, it looked like really similar to like like a Breath of the Wild kind of thing, like a big open world. And so I kind of expected the same kind of fighting system as that, like something where I'm like you know swinging a sword and like countering and stuff like that but the as far as i can tell the battle system in skyrim is not that complex it's very simple and what that really leans to is that you can grind in this game because it is an rpg at its heart and so you can grind and get your stats up and start just like murdering people like it's insane uh I don't know if the world was as appealing to me as it was to other people. Like, the music's good. I don't think it's great. It's not great, in my opinion. The 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 really Western style of, like, the villages and, like, it's, you know, it's like an old European village. I'm, I'm, I hear this is Nordic. I don't know. But, um, yeah. Sorry, I kind of lost my train of thought there for a second. But Skyrim. Will I get back to this game? I think I need like tons of free time to be able to really enjoy this game. And I don't know if I'm there yet. So let's go to one more game. I should have done this after Red Dead Redemption. Grand, Grand, Theft, Auto, <laughs> Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. Uh, classic PS2 game. Um, and I got the PS2 version. I didn't get the PS3 or anything. I still have my PS2 Slim like set up, ready to go. This thing's really great piece of hardware. It's definitely slim PS2 if you don't have one. They're only gonna get more expensive in my opinion. Uh, but San Andreas, it's cool, you know? It's kind of like, weird, like, the missions are like, when you really think about, the mission that I stopped on, so like, this is just stupid, is I've gotta like, go to a lowrider event and like start bouncing my car and it's like a it's, it's a rhythm game at that point and uh 
it just seemed kind of stupid. And I know a lot of people are more into like just going around town and shooting people and stuff like that and stealing cars and not really paying attention to the plot of this game. But I really wanted to like continue in this game and that's the kind of like player I am usually. And I couldn't do it. It was just so boring. Like the some of the stuff you have to do is just so lame. Um, and another thing is just that the, uh, the controls of this game are good, not great. Um, so like shooting and being accurate and like just basically moving your character around fluidly is difficult. So Grand Theft Auto, great soundtrack, that's fun. I mean, I don't know. I think you have to be a little bit younger than me to like really just be like, yeah, this is awesome. Like 38, this is not when you should be playing this game. Yeah, I'm old. What's up, old game YouTubers? You're out there, aren't you? All right, last one. I finished this game last night. Boom. Final Fantasy X. <laughs> this is such a weird game. So, I play Final Fantasy 1, 2, 3, 6, 7, 8, and 10. Those are the Final Fantasies that I've played. This game was so weird and uh, the main thing I didn't like about it was it's so linear. Like the exploration aspect does not feel like it's there. You've got one way to go. You can like, you know, go a little off the path and get a chest or something like that. But compared to games that I'm used to now with a really open world setting, it's really strange to go to a game that is like this. Um, so this is the first game I've played from Final Fantasy where the soundtrack was not done by Nobuye Uematsu, it was done by his like sound team, so I've heard. And uh, the soundtrack's good, I would say, when you compare it to something like 6 or 7, nah, not even close. Not even close. Uh, the the memorableness of the melodies of uh, six and uh, seven uh, are just incredible, and it's not there. There's some cool music, but it's not as memorable as uh, later game or earlier games. Uh, the character design so weird, so weird. Like you got like a cat guy wearing a speedo. Um, there's like lots of people that are just like in like bikinis. I know it's like some like beach world or something like that. And like Titus has got his like shorts with like netting that goes down to the bottom of his shorts. Like it's such a weird style. Like I don't know why they did it like this. Like I know they wanted to break away like from conventions of medieval things like they did with the Final Fantasy VII. They made it more of like a steampunk futuristic thing. and They were going for something totally different and that's cool. I get that, that's cool. Uh, the styling though did not age well. I don't know if this was ever good. Like the only person I think looks cool is uh, Oren. Oren looks dope. He looks super strong. You know, he's just wearing like a big red jacket, has a giant sword and a scar on his face. He looks like a badass. And then like everyone else, Riku and Yuna, like, it's just weird to me. Um, the fighting is good in the fact that you can change characters live. I really like that. Like, you can swip, swap party members at any time during a fight. And that really opens up uh, some gameplay that you really haven't got in a lot of uh, other RPGs. So that was cool. Um, I think the character balance is really strange. Like, uh... I just wound up using Titus, Waka, and Orin like all the time and by the end of the game these guys are usually, unless the character's defense is super high, dealing out around like 9,000 uh, HP of damage with each hit. That's huge. And um, so then I had my other characters like Kimari and uh, Riku, which I didn't use that much earlier and the gap just got bigger and bigger and bigger and I could not use them in fights anymore. and like. I really don't know why they uh, didn't make the character balance a little better. Like, especially with like someone like Lulu. Lulu is your black mage in the game, and she's uh, she's cool. Like, I wish I could have made her stronger, but like her 
magic attacks just did not take as much HP as my, my guys, my three dudes. And so that's just who I use. Um, but, you know, I finished it. I beat this game. So it must not have been horrible. It took me about 70 hours to beat it. Finished it yesterday. Uh, another thing weird about this game, the spear grid. Do you guys know about the spear grid? So, like, in previous Final Fantasy games, you know, you're just being automatically uh, level up and then some of your stats go up depending on which character it is. This gives you customizability in terms of which character gets what kind of upgrades, like magic upgrades, HPs, different abilities. And it's cool. It's a huge waste of time. Like, I don't want to go in there every time and choose which thing I've got to do. And then also I've got to... Uh, worry about having my like level two, three, four, like, like locks. It's really weird. Like you have to, to be able to continue, sometimes you have to have an item that you'll only find once or twice, not once or twice, but rarely in the game. Uh, so, and it's weird cause like, you know, of course you want your black mage to get stronger at magic. Of course you want your uh, fighter guy to have uh, huge strength. Like, why do I have the options to make these people, like, different? Especially when it's just so time-invested. Because, like, you know, in a Final Fantasy game, when you get later in the game, usually, like, for, like, six or seven, your level-ups don't come as often. And so when they come, you're like, oh, wow, I've been playing for a while, I guess, like, when a level-up comes. And this game is, like, every two or three fights. And, of course, you can go back to the Spear Grid later and, like, spend them, like, spend your upgrades one at a time. But... That's even more time consuming because then you got to think about it, the strategy of it, and that's really not why I wanted to play this game. For me, that just doesn't make sense to me like, that I would want to spend like, I would say like maybe 10% of the game doing that because you have to think about it each one you're doing. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe, you know, people are just like, oh, bibba, 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 and like filling it out, but that's not me. So those were the games I played in 2020. Um, there was some other stuff, a little bit like Mario Brothers Super Saga for the Game Boy Advance. Meh. It was okay. I think it's overrated. I didn't finish it because it was just like, you know, super repetitive in terms of like, input these two things and then you jump on them and then that guy jumps on you. It's like, okay, I guess that's fun. Um, but that's it. So let me know in the comments, uh, have you played these games? What's your opinion of these games? What's your favorite out of them? Uh, did you play a lot more video games in 2020? If so, what did you play? Thanks for tuning in. Sorry I got like really rambly, but I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye.